Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Online Band Director Summit hosted by WinConductor.com and Amato Music. This hour, we have a very special guest, Mr. Robbie Spires from Lancaster, Virginia. Rob has been the band director at Lancaster High School for 32 years. One of the most significant things about his program is the size of his band in comparison to the size of the school. I'm sure we are all going to learn a lot from his experience. Rob, thank you so much for joining us today. And how about we just start with a little bit of uh, information and background information about you? Because uh, you, uh, you teach in a rural area right now, but uh, that's not necessarily where your childhood started. Well, no. Hey, great to be with you, by the way. Hey, um, uh, I grew up in, in, in Richmond, Virginia, Henrico County. I went to Henrico High School in Richmond, um, which was a good size school, good size band. Um, really, 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 uh, I mean, right in a, right in a huge county. I uh, went to James Madison University, and, and that was, uh, of course, a great band place and a great, a great university. Um, so I'm not really, my background is not in rural at all. And so when I got my job, in 1985 um it was a, it was a different experience for me because this town lancaster county is is uh 10, people total and uh the school's small it's only got three high schools um i mean three schools a one primary one middle and one high school um and my school was about 360 kids grade 9 through 12. so wow. um, that's kind of where i came from and where i am now yeah so, uh, you know, I, I guess it's a big change uh, coming from uh, Chesterfield because Chesterfield, for people that don't live in Virginia, uh, Chesterfield and Rico County and Richmond, you know, that's uh, the capital of the state. It's right in the heart of the state. Uh, and, uh, you know, Rich, Richmond is not that far from Washington, D.C. And uh, so it's actually a really heavily populated area. But one of the things that people don't always notice when they think about Virginia and I think about our history and everything is that there's a lot of rural areas in Virginia. Tell us about Lancaster County and uh, the, the conditions there. Maybe uh, talk to us about uh, the demographics that are in Lancaster. Well, the county is located in uh, northeast Virginia, which is right on the Chesapeake Bay. Um, and it's not really on the way anywhere. So you really have to be coming here to get here. Um, you don't pass through it to get from, say, Fredericksburg to the, the, the beach. You know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't pass through at all. Um, so it is rural in nature and, and, and it's uh, got a history of um, uh, fishing, farming. Um, and, and so that's pretty much what they still do now. Um, and, and the, the demographics of, of, of the county really are, um, so wide wide range there, there are a lot of retirees um, a lot of people retire to this county they come down from dc and come down from come from richmond and they retire here get a house on the water and live the american dream you know um right and so about 70 percent of this county falls kind of in that category retirees um then they're the families that were born here raised here and are still here um and those are most of those are the ones who send their kids to school and so they are kids of ki kids of parents who've been here and their parents have been here forever and ever. Um, so we have a lot of low income, a lot of, a lot of people who, who aren't working, can't work, can't find work. Um, and the, the fishing industry down here has, has kind of dried up a little bit. It's not as, as robust as it used to be, say 30, 40 years ago. Um, so we have a lot of, uh, a lot of school lunch uh, participants, a lot of low income, a lot of kids that don't have, um, but then there's the other, other spectrum. There are a lot of people who, who, uh, um, who have a lot of money, but they just don't have kids in school. Mm -hmm. um, so we have, a, we, have a, we have a wide range here. So that's kind right. of demographics of where we are. Well, so, uh, so Lancaster, uh, being that rural community and uh, kind of having that, uh, the two different sides of the spectrum represented there, uh, I guess that presents a lot of unique opportunities for you in the classroom i uh, you know I, we talk about i uh, we talk about uh diversity and that's kind of a a, a catchphrase now but uh you know one of the things uh, there's a lot more to diversity than just some of the cultural things but also the socioeconomic uh aspect of things maybe talk to us a little bit about the diversity of your band program you know i've got all kinds i've got i've got black white i've got um poor rich um, male, female, you know, it, it's, it's, and it's pretty much 50, 50, what, what we have. 
um, you can you can look at the band and it's pretty much a smaller microcosm of the population of the school um, and and they all buy in whether they are rich poor whether they are black white they they're all part and they're all part of the family and that's kind of the beauty the beauty of the program um, and it's been like that you know it's been like that ever since I've been here um, the other thing is you know, when when they come down here you no longer know who the rich and the poor are you know they 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 become one they become mm -hmm. one family and they they make music together whether they have a have a cheap horn that they got off eBay or whether they have you know the top of the line buffet clarinet you know they they all make music together and they all come to me um as kids seeking to learn music and kids seeking to make music um whether they're poor or rich it, 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 you know it, it, it kind of and as, a, as an educator and, and i'm sure people watching this would, would agree you know you take them where they are you take them when they where where they are is where you get them and then you make music with them whether they are you know, who doesn't matter who they are so um i really take pride in that fact that this is not just a just a group of kids who can afford to be in band, who can afford an instrument, and it's not just a group of, of white kids or a group of black kids. It's not a group of of all boys, all girls. It is a diverse group in all in, in all aspects, and um, it's never really talked about. It's it's just understood. You know, we I never really address black, white, or, or or those who have and don't have. You know, you you just accept those who come in your room, and that's and that's the beauty of the program, and and I think that's one of the reasons why it's grown one of the reasons why it's so popular and, and such a success um is because anybody's accepted and, and and anybody anybody who comes down here um come down in this band room knows they're gonna be treated the same way as as the other person and 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 you know that's that's as a as a as an educator that is so important you know you you've got to view a kid as a kid and not as a this and that or that it, it's it's um anyway yeah so that's the diversity that's that's kind of yeah what I have here. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's some of the points that you brought up there are so true. And it's uh, something that, you know, the, it's one of the beautiful things about the band program is that, uh, you know, music transcends cultures. It transcends race. It transcends uh, socioeconomic status. And it, in a lot of ways, is so much a unifier. We've seen that throughout history how music just really brings people together. And just to, uh, it's one of the beautiful things about the, the band room. Uh, now, uh, you mentioned uh, earlier that when you first came there uh, to Lancaster County, uh, you had about 350 kids in the entire school. And uh, there, uh, it really, uh, you know, it, it fluctuates uh, from year to year, but tell us a little bit about uh, the size of this, uh, the entire school program. Uh, and then we'll talk um, a little bit about your band program and uh, its size and everything. Sure. Well, uh, when I arrived uh, 32 years ago, um, 1985, when I arrived, it was a it was a healthy program. There were 65 kids in it. Um, that was in a school population of about 550, 600. Mm -hmm. And when I got here, it was grade eight through 12. And so um, there were 65 total total people in the band. And, 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 and they, they had, had 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 success and they had, they had really set up a really nice little tradition. Um, so when I got here, um, we just kind of kept, kept, kept doing what was done before. And um, over the years, the school population has risen a bit and it's gone down a bit. Um, about 10 years after I was here, we dropped the eighth grade. So then we became nine through 12. Um, so in, in the course of those years, the school has begun to drop in population and, and we are down now to, to, like I said, 360. And that's about the lowest that the school has been. And as again, that's nine through 12. Um, when I started, there were 65 kids in the band. Um, at the height of my numbers, um, probably the mid nineties, we got up to about 190 kids in the band program. Wow. Um, and that was in a population of close to 600. So, um, you know, it, 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 it really went up as the school population went up. Um, but then as the school population went back down and I think homeschooling began, began to, to, to take hold a lot more than, than it had before. Um, right. So now I'm down to, and, and I'm at about 125 now, which, which is great in, in a school of 360. Oh yeah. That's amazing. Um, really has, you know, I guess you can say the percentages have stayed the same. Um, once, once we kind of got the, got the program moving in the right direction, as far as getting it bigger, um, it just kind of blossomed and, and then and then and then it pretty much stayed consistent with what the population of the school was. Wow. That's 
you know, uh, someone uh, looking at this, you know, you, you talk about it very casually about the size of your program and everything. But when you look at it statistically, you know, uh, the average band program usually touches about five to seven percent of the student population in a really healthy band program, a really healthy program, which was what you came into back in 1985. You came into a really healthy band program, but still their percentage of the population that they were reaching was still only in the 10 to 15 percent of the student population, right. which uh, statistically, that's a really, really strong program when you're reaching that amount of kids and everything. But you have really tapped into something amazing in your community and uh, your culture down in Lancaster. Uh, tell us about uh, that that aspect of community, because I think that's really key with uh, so a lot of the growth and development that you've experienced over the years. That, that, that's one of the keys. But, but when, when you're in a small town and you really can't experience this, if, if you're in a, if, if you're in a, in a big city, Fairfax County, or if you, even if you're in Richmond, if you're in uh, Virginia Beach, Norfolk, those, those big areas and, and anybody outside of the state, if you're in a big, big town, a big, a big city, big County, you can't experience the community aspect of a band program. Um, it's you know it kind of takes me back to the uh, musical the, the the music man which which uh, was a small town they were forming a band everybody was proud of it everybody was excited their little Johnny was going to play and so that's kind of what goes on here kind of in a in in, in a in a bigger scale because um, as 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 the program began to develop and as we got into 1990 um, we began to really market this thing to be a community organization because we weren't just just a high school band we were we were the we were the, the the lancaster county's band and so we represented everybody in this county and every, everywhere we went and so um the community loves it and 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 I, and I need to say that if if anybody in the community calls me and says hey you know can you bring so-and-so over to play for so-and-so can you provide a trumpet player to play taps can you come bring a little a little combo to play you know um you've got to say yes you've got to You've got to, for the, for, for, the, for the success of the program in the community, um, you need to say yes. And, and because not, not only will it, will it help your program later on, but it's the right thing to do because the community will, will, will then support you anything you do. You have your hand out, you, 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 sell, you sell some cookie dough or you, you, a box of fruit, they go buy it and, and, and they're going to support you because you've supported them. And, and, and not only that, but when you go places and when you support them, when you, I mean, when you, when you represent them and you're playing somewhere, um, you know, you've got to have high expectations. And then when they come back and they've won awards or they've acted great and there've been no problems and they've made, made everybody proud, then that's, that it, it just feeds on it. And, and so um, I'd say that's huge for a, a, a rural community band to become the community's band and to seek that label and, and market yourself that way. Um, and, 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 and the people will eat it up. They will. They love having a band that goes out and represents them. And, you know, let me say this. One of the, one of the, the uh, really the highlights of my year um, is playing for our Christmas parade in, 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 in December because it's a nighttime parade. Everybody in the whole county gathers. There's a, I mean, people, they're, they're five and six deep watching the parade because it's a great community event um and they put us at the end and and really the best part of my job is doing that parade because you get to this point where all the people are and they cheer you like it's elvis presley coming down the road because they're just so proud of the band and and, and so you walk down and you're like wow this is great but but you can't experience that if you're not in this kind of kind of area so um i guess i'll say that to to, to just if, if anybody's watching this that has a rural program, you know, just, just um, embrace that, embrace that, that, that atmosphere, that embrace that label because gosh, man, they are your lifeblood. Um, mm. And, and that gives me more pride to see and hear that than to have a adjudicator tell me, you know, superior rating, you know, that's great. I love superior ratings, but you know, part of my, part of my job and, and, and part of I really enjoy is just seeing the, the, the response of people who love the band. Community. Yeah, you know, I, I think uh, that's I think that's so important. And I think that's uh, I think that aspect of community is really, in my opinion, I think it's kind of led to some of the uh, issues that we're having with uh, support of music programs in across the nation uh, is that people aren't uh, going out and supporting the bands like they used to. But at the same time, you know, we're 
I, I really feel that it's the band director's responsibility to take ownership of leading the community to have that value in music education. And, you know, one of the biggest ways that you can do that is by hitting those parades. And, you know, your biggest audience uh, is Friday nights and you've got them every single Friday night in the fall. Uh, you're not going to have that many people in the concert hall, but they're going to be watching you on the field. Talk to us a little bit about your marching program, because you uh, because your program is so big, it reaches, you know, 30 to as much as 40 percent of your student population. Uh, what are some of the issues that you've encountered with marching band in that situation? Because when you're talking about that larger group, you're, they are spread out involved in a lot of different things. So what are some of the things you've done to address that? The, the face of this school and the face of this band program is our marching band um, because I require everybody to be in a marching band. And, and, and that's different than what a lot of guys do. Um, if you're in the band program, you're in the marching band. And that's understood. And that's understood from day one. Um, because of that, the band is big because I require everybody to be in it. But also because of that, um, we, we, we really can't do uh, elaborate field shows and we can't do theme field shows. And, and, and we just don't. And I don't go to any field show competitions, um, mainly because when you have 100 kids in the band um, and half of them are playing this sport and half of them are go to this sport, you know, the school's so small that you've got athletes and you've got uh, key club members and you've got cheerleaders and you've got all that involved in your band as well. And neither one of those are more important than the other. Um, but you've got to share. And, and, and um, it, it's really important for me to have a good relationship with the athletic directors and with the coaches um, because we are a community that has to help each other. Um, so, so as far as the marching band, um, we strictly do parades, standstill performances. Um, we do a, we do a limited field show, you know, um, the kids, the kids, the kids memorize music. They march on the field. We do a couple of moves, a couple of simple moves. Um, but, but we pretty much just plant and blow and we let the flags, you know, do their routine real nicely and they do they add to the color and the visual um and it's and it's just well received i, I think i think on this level in this community um to see 100 kids on the field planting and blowing great music um i think they'd rather see that and hear that and be entertained by that than you know i'm, I'm not knocking anybody's program but but more more so than watching a, a, a 30 or 40 move show that's based on you know, uh, family opera or something that, you know, which, which is, which is great stuff, you know, but it just doesn't play here. And, and I guess my biggest point that I, that I would love to make with this is um, you've got to do what, what's going to work with your community. You've got to do what's going to work with your band. Um, and this has worked. And then, and then making the, making the red devil band, that's what we're called the red devil band, making that the face of, of the school and the face of the community. Um, you can't do field shows like that because you don't get the kids so much after the school. Um, so everything you do has got to be done during the day in school and about 30 minutes after school when you get them all together. Um, but that's marching band. Marching band for us is, is the Red Devil Band. And, 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 and I've developed it into something that has worked and something that, that, that has been embraced by the community. Um, and, it's, and, it, and it may not be embraced by some of the other, you know, BBODA, the, you know, the, the, all, the, all, all the assessments and all. I don't do all that. And so, you know, I think, I think sometimes guys look at a program like mine and they say, you know, I guess rightly so, because they don't really understand, but, but rightly so, they don't, you know, they don't, they don't do it, you know, but, but they really, they really don't understand, you know, the program. And I, and I think that that was probably re refreshing to hear to other guys in the rural, rural, rural system, because you don't have to do everything everybody's doing, you know, yeah. get your job, get your job and f figure out what works best and do it and do it. And, 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 and you don't have to look at, look down, down, you know, two hours away at these guys who are, who are doing a great thing, great things with their programs. And um, it's just not possible in the rural setting. So you just need to be realistic. Um, I, I guess your other choice could be um, March 20 to 25 kids, 15, 20, 25 kids, have them every day, put together a nice show. Um, that's your other option. Um, but are you really accomplishing what's best for, the kids, you know, um, right. I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, I don't want to call it any, 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 uh, you know, controversy or anything, but I think, well, I think, I, I think your band program is yours and you right. can look at it and, and know what you want to do. And, and, and if that's, if, if that's the way you want to go, then I think it's awesome. But I know in this program, when I got here, um, this was the direction that this program should have gone needed to go 
to reach its potential um, for the kids and for the kids only. You know, I'm not out for any adjudicators. I'm out to teach music and right. represent the community. And, 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 and so the kids can leave here. And like they say, I hear, I hear it every year, you know, gosh, band was the best thing I've ever done. You know, and that's, that's, that's all I want to hear. So Sure. Well, and I, you touched on uh, several points in that, and I uh, just kind of wanted to highlight a couple of those. You know, the first thing uh, you were talking about, the community uh, amongst the, uh, the people that you work with and having that strong relationship with, uh, you know, the athletic director, having that strong relationship with the football coach and with the uh, cheerleading coach, with the debate team, whatever it may be, the science department. Uh, and, uh, you know, that – that really uh, says a lot about your program as well. And, uh, you know, sometimes we get, it's easy for band directors because we're the only one that teaches band in our building right. to kind of get isolated in our band rooms. And I, I think it's, I think what you said about really having that relationship and having that working relationship and that symbiotic relationship is so important. I, uh, and, and it, again, it, uh, that's, advocacy as well i mean because when you're reaching out to them and helping them with what they've got going on working with them that when it comes time for them to back you up they're going to be right there supporting you exactly right exactly right and and and, and the school's so small like it is you know it's only 35 40 faculty members and and you know so um you you just got to say you got to go to football coach hey I'm going to send them to you at 4 o'clock today. Is that cool? Yeah, that's cool. Okay, we'll, we'll wait for them. So, you know, so you, so you get them 3.30 to 4 o'clock, and then, you know, you got to realize that that's all you can do. you got to stop right there, send them on, because, uh, you know, that's, that's cooperation. Everybody's cooperating. Some, some years are better than others, and some people cooperate better than others. But, but um, you know, it's, 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 it's just, you know, it's, it's the whole mindset of there are, there are you know, you've got to pick your battles, and there are more important things than – having every single kid every single minute of the time and you can't have because they have band. Well, you know what? They also have interests elsewhere. Um, and, and, and in a small school like this, you've got to realize that and, and you've got to have some give and take and you've got to be very flexible and you've got to be understanding. Um, Cause if you don't, you gonna lose them. They're going right. to say, well, hit it. I'm not going to do it then, you know? And, and so um, it, it, I have standards and I have expectations for them to be a practice, but at the same time, um, if, if a kid has a D or F in a class and they have tutoring out to school, you know, that's not, that, that's nothing more important than that. And, and, and you've got to say as a band director, you've got to say, Hey, go to tutoring. That's gosh, you know, you got past your classes, dude. Yeah. You know, so that's, 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 um, and, and, and there are hundreds of things like that tutoring and key club and sports. And, you know, it's, it's, it's always something. Um, and really there, I have some kids who they've got to work to help their parents put food on the table. And so after school, they come to me, I, you know, I've got to go to work today, you know, go for it. But, but my, my, my biggest thing to my kids are, you, you tell me what you're doing. You, you, have, you have a responsibility to me and the rest of these kids to tell me where you're going and what you're doing because mm -hmm. you're in this band. Um, yeah. So anyway. That's good. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know, one of the other things that you, uh, you talked about was really identifying uh, your community and the direction of your program in relationship to that community. Uh, and I think what you were talking about and trying to avoid the comparison thing, because what happens in suburbia is not going to happen in a farm community. What happens in the inner city is not going to happen in suburbia. Uh, what happens in Virginia is not going to happen in Indiana. Uh, you know, you're going to have pockets of stuff here and there, but, uh, you know, really identifying your demographics in your community and really developing your program in regards to that is so important. Yep, yep. I, I mean, it's, it's all, you know, you are in your own situation and you understand what you can do, what you can't do. Um, and so, I mean, it's hard for a, for a, a new graduate who comes into a situation like, like I'm in or a situation at, a, at any rural school, let's say rural school X, to come into this high school and say, you know, okay, uh, let's, let's, do a, let's do a big show. Let's do, let's do all these things and, let's, and let's, let's play grade six music. Let's play Chester. And let's, you know, it's really, it's really easy to, to leave, to leave your, your college experience and say, okay, I'm ready to, I'm ready to do, do that with my band. And, and so um, it's, it's, it's a huge, huge surprise when you get to your kids in front of you and you hear them play for the first time. Um, so, 
so you've got to you've got to be really realistic mm-hmm. with with what your club band can do, and and so you need to be and, and and then whatever they do, you do it the best way you can possibly do it, and you do it with pride, with excellence, with high expectations. Whether it's whether it's a whole note etude or whether it's or whether it's this hardest piece in the world, you know you've got to do it, and the kids have to do it with the best sound they can possibly do with it, sitting up straight in their chairs, you know, no gum, all that stuff. It doesn't matter what you do. You do it. You do it. High expectations, and you know everybody who hears your band, they don't know you're playing a whole note etude. They know the kids look great and they sound great and they're proud. Right. Yeah, that's so true. I yep. uh, and you know the uh, talking about uh, the uh, the programming mm-hmm. and all that other stuff. Uh, you know. <laughs> And preparing our kids and for that diversity, you know, you came out of JMU and you look at, uh, you know, JMU, you know, at one point, I think they wound up having the the biggest marching band, college marching band in the U.S. I think they held that title. I don't know if they still hold that title, but they're, they're really close. But because of that, you know, the vast majority of that band is not music majors. Uh, right. There's a lot of people uh, coming in that marched in high school and I uh, had those experiences. And I, I think in a lot of ways, what you do with your program uh, really models what a lot of the college bands wind up doing with uh, the diversity that they have in the interests of their students uh, in regards to what they do on the field. And it becomes, uh, you know, the, the function of a college band is very much to build the hype of the football game, the football team, the crowd, get everybody excited and fill that time there. And I think uh, uh, in a lot of ways, when you – and I'm, I'm not saying this to denounce uh, competitive marching. You know, uh, I took my bands to competitions all the time, and it worked. I think future. it's great. I think co- co- competitive marching is awesome. And, you know, I would love to be in that experience, but I'm not, and it's okay. Right. But I think what you do is just, I think that's probably one of the reasons that you've seen such a significant growth in your program is just the, the value that you add to that whole Friday night experience. Yeah. And, 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 and the kids want to be, any kid wants to be part of a successful thing. Right. And they want to be part of a thing that's done well. Yeah. And they want to be part of a thing that has high expectations. And they want to be part of a thing that has a leader who, who cares for them and, and, and a leader who's going to be at work every day. A leader is not that that's not going to take off every Friday or every Monday because they're tired or every you know every every sick day that they because they don't feel like coming in you know it it it, it all it all feeds in the mm-hmm. kids know what teachers you know and anybody listening to know you know what teachers cared for you in your school you know what teachers worked hard you know what teachers were there and you know what teachers are the first ones there in the morning and the last one to leave so that's that that also is what feeds into it because the kids the kids will flock to your program if you care for them. And you teach them with with everything you have. You never miss days. They will flock to your program. And then, like I am now, I have two hundred and some days sick days because I never take them because <laughs> I'm I'm a teacher, you know. And, right. and and here for the kids, I'm here to teach them. And uh, um, so anyway, the kids will flock to your program if you do all that. Yeah, that's uh, that's really key there. And I I wanted to at this point I wanted to talk about. Uh, the kids in the program and uh, your interaction because it's clear uh, that you have a passion for what you're doing. And I'd love for you to talk about that passion a little bit because it comes through in the, you know, I've met kids that have graduated from your program and that yeah. passion is yeah. so infectious, you know? It is. And I mean, it's, it's, it's not about band. It's not about music. It's about kids and a, and, and, a, and, a, and a leader trying to, trying to change their lives and trying to have an impact, just a small impact, just a little impact. You know, um, you've got to have relationships with the kids. You've, they've got to know that you care for them. They've got to know that if they can't get a ride to practice, that you're gonna, you'll stop by and pick them up. They've got to know that, and, and, and they've, got to have, they've got to know that, you know, if, if they hurt their leg and they come back the next day, you ask, you got to ask your kid, hey, how's your leg? You know, or, hey, how'd you do in a game last night? You know, or, you know what, how about go to some of the games? How about go to a basketball game? And they see you there, man. You know, that, that's relationship. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's that's all huge. And if you see them walk, walk them in the hallway, you know, you just, you know, what's up, man? You fist pump or whatever, because that's that's relationships. And, and, and again, that's more that goes far beyond band. And, and, and um, um, band will work. Band will happen. The music will happen. The rehearsals will happen. Um, the concerts will come and go and, you know, but these kids 20 and 30 years later, 
will always know that you are you are a guy, you are their favorite teacher. You are a guy that they enjoyed to being with, being in that room. You didn't want to be anywhere else. Band was your best, your favorite subject, not because they're gonna be music majors, but because they knew that they were cared for and they were they, they were in a, in a in a safe place in that environment. Right. So that's, that's that's relationships. Oh, that, I'm glad you asked me because that's that's huge. That's it huge. is. Yeah. yeah. And that uh, and when we start thinking about uh, you know when you, if you start picturing your band ten years from now. 20 years from now, you know, we think of the, a lot, it's, I want, it's easy for us as band directors to think of our kids as musicians, but in the grand scheme of things, when we're talking about kids that are, you know, 14 to 18 years old, uh, what are they going to be doing when they're 40 years old? Right. You know, and uh, having that uh, mentality and having that, uh, you know, it, talk, it really goes into what, what really are we teaching them? And a significant portion of that is that relation at relationship aspect and the, the teamwork, the camaraderie that you get through music and band. Right. I mean, it's huge. Uh, you know, and, and, and a lot of my kids are not going to um, play, you know, once they play for graduation in the last year and they leave here, they don't play the horn anymore. And, and, and that's at first that bothered me. But as I've grown wiser and older, you know, it's, it's, it, it really doesn't matter because um, they've had seven years, four with me and four at the middle school, they've had seven years of making music and experiencing music and appreciating music and appreciating being in a group atmosphere that when they leave here, they're better people. Right. They, they never play their horn again. Um, and I say 90% of them never do. You know, some go play college bands. Um, I've had a couple that have that have become band directors, but, um, just not, just not many at all. And, and so it's, it's, uh, you're not, you're not here to shape the next band director, you know, right. There are, there are going to be some, and that's great. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, 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 yeah. Mm. I don't know what else. So, uh, you know, uh, even though you teach at a very, uh, you know, a small school in comparison to, you know, like your your Fairfaxes and your uh, uh, Chesterfields and whatnot, uh, you've actually done a lot of really cool things with your band. You guys uh, really take the opportunity to really expose your kids, which uh, in a lot of ways becomes even more important in a, a rural community to get them out of uh, that community and expose them to uh, different cultures and whatnot. Tell us about a little bit about what you've done as far as travel and whatnot. We, um, we, we, we take a trip every year. Um, and really part of my job and one of the other hats I put on is fundraising. And, and so I fundraise like crazy. Um, <laughs> if anybody wants to have some good ideas, <laughs> I've got them, man. I've got them. I've done, I know what works and what doesn't work. Um, but we take a trip every year and, and, you know, you have to plan and, you know, about maybe about eight or nine months out, I'm planning the next trip. Mm. And so I'm offering fundraisers because when you have kids who don't have money and kids who are, who are, uh, just trying to make ends meet parents can't you know um you've got to have fundraisers so the kids can raise the money for that trip and so um we did yes so i do that but 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 to, to get back to your question we we do take a tri take a trip every year um and you know we started off the usual we go to myrtle beach and, and we we've gone to, to to different things but then but you know about eight seven eight years into this thing um, I started thinking, you know, this band's getting to be over 100 members. This, this is, you know, we can start doing some bigger things. Um, so I just, you know, and, and, and I want to tell everybody, you're not going to go anywhere unless you try. And so right. I, I put in, putting together a, a, a videotape. And so one of the breakthrough trips that we took was we got invited and we got accepted to go to the Sugar Bowl, which is in, in, in New Orleans. So we did a halftime show at the Sugar Bowl. Um, and once, once we broke through that and we got accepted, that was huge for us and huge for the school and huge for me because after we did that, we went and they saw the band. And so um, Bowl Games of America now knows me. They know our school. And now I can pick up the phone. Hey, I want to go to so-and-so bowl. And we have. We've done two right. BCA championship bowl games. We've done, you know, Orange Bowl. We've done Sugar Bowl. We've done Peach Bowl. We're getting ready to go to Gator Bowl in, in December this year. Um, and so because of that, you start to get a name. And so uh, things lead to other things. We've, we've been to London. We've marched a New Year's Day parade in London, England. Um, we've been to Bahamas. We took three, I've taken three cruises with the band, you know, cruise wow. ships in Bahamas, Bermuda. Uh, it's gone to Disney World more times than I really care to go. But anyway, that's, that's uh, you know, we, we've tried to, as a band director, I've tried to do that every four years so that everybody has that experience. Um, yeah. So if you, if you do 30, 33 divided by four. That tells you how many times I've been to Disney World, but um, it's okay. It's, it's fine. 
Um, and that's, I think band director is uh, just, I think band directors are among the few people that uh, really see it for not being as magical as it is. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but yeah. you know what? The reason this band, this is a whole other another success thing of this band is because they know we're going to do the extra fun stuff. They have a finish line. They have they have a goal that that they're, they're going to reach. And and this year, we're shooting for that December thirtieth uh, Gator Bowl because that's what we're mm. that's like that's like the the pinnacle of the year. Um, and, and so you got to have one of those every year to keep yeah. the kids not even interested. And, 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 you know, you're not really buying the kids, you know, you know, you're, you're offering opportunities. Right. And these kids in this community, they will never get out of this community. Um, unless other people give them opportunities. Sure. And I, I wasn't knocking the whole Disney thing. There's a lot of cool things that Disney does <laughs> I was. for uh, band trips and everything, but uh, it, it can get old uh, after the fourth or fifth time that you've gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, old for me, but but the oh, kids yeah, love but it. totally new for the kids, exactly. Yeah, I mean, we just did the the light parade two two years ago. Yeah, and that was a, that was an amazing experience, yeah. and have the kids have my kids marching down, you know, Magic Kingdom and, and sure. stuff. Uh, it was a great experience. And now, did so you ever do awesome. any of the uh, um, the soundtrack stuff that, that they? We brought? haven't. No, that no, is actually a really sense. cool experience. I understand that's great. Yep. Yeah, that was a neat little thing that they did there, uh, and I, uh, you know. If, Anybody taking their kids down, if that's in the plans for you guys, uh, that's a really cool experience. The light show is really cool because it's a parade at night. And uh, yeah. then the, uh, the, um, that soundtrack thing is really cool as well. So, yeah. but, uh, uh, so you've, you've mentioned the, uh, the traveling and the fundraising and everything. And uh, you kind of uh, talked a little bit about some of the kids and needs and everything. Uh, what are some of the things that you've uh, found in your band program in dealing with? Because, you know, there's a lot of people that uh, have dealt with a lot of kids in need and trying to uh, get them what they need as far as to be successful in the classroom. But on top of that, to get them to be a part of uh, everything that the band does. So what are some of the things that you've seen that have been successful for you? You know, um, um, the biggest challenge is uh, kids getting instruments the kids having horns. And, 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 you know, this, this falls back to the sixth grade when they start band. Um, and so kids really can't afford, they, they can't afford, I mean, they, some, some can't even afford a $35 a month to, to rent it. And so what, what ends up happening is they get a hand-me-down from, from somebody who's been in band that's, that's really not very good quality. Um, a lot of kids and parents, they go on, they go on, uh, go on eBay or wherever they can go to get, to get a $100 instrument that's been made in China, which, you know, we all know as band directors and educators, they're not the best instruments in the world. Um, but this comes back to the whole thing of, you know, you, you really can't fight that battle because the kids can't, they can only afford what they can afford. Um, so when they come to you and they have a hundred dollar horn off of eBay, um, you, you've got to make music with it. You know, you can't, you know, you, with, even with the, with the intonation problems, it's, it's going to, it's going to give you or, or with the, with, with the bent key that bends so easy when somebody touches it because it's cheap. Um, you've got to be able to kind of fix little things like that. You've got to accept, you've got to accept all those things because again, you're getting the kids where they are and that's mm -hmm. where they are. And they come to your band program. And if, if, if you as a band director say, if you don't have a buffet clarinet, you can't be in this band, then you're doing an injustice to everybody in that school. Right. Um, so, so, you know, I take them where they come. And if, if my flute players, I can tune all day. And, and if one of them's always out of tune, then you just deal with it and you, and you, and you, and you enjoy, you enjoy the music that they're making because that's where they come from and that's where they are. Um, so as, as, as far as the low income kids, um, that's a challenge. And, and that's something you just need to kind of have a different, different, you got, got to kind of adjust your mindset with that. Um, sometimes we put kids on bass clarinet or on, on, on uh, tuba or, you know, things that the school owns. Um, I would say drums, but I don't put anybody on drums. That do. <laughs> right. but, but I mean, you know, there are options for kids who don't have, who just can't, can't afford anything. Um, and, and I, and I've, in my years of being here, I've, I've, I've accumulated some instruments that people have given me as they've gotten out of band. Well, I'm not going to use it anymore. Would you like to have it? So I, I, so I've got a, I've got four or five trumpets and four or five clarinets and trombones that I can draw from if somebody breaks a horn and, and, and um, um, I can provide, um, but but they do know 
I mean, it's, it is a prerequisite to get in band. You've got to have a horn. Um, so we, you really can't start giving out horns to kids. You've got to require everybody to have a horn to, to be in band. Um, that's, that's a requirement, but you really can't, you know, you can't be real picky about the quality that they get if you want them to stay in band and, uh, and stay all seven years. Right. Yeah. And that's, uh, that, that's key. Uh, and you know, obviously that's the goal that, that we all strive for is to get that, that high retention rate with our band program. Right. Now, I. Uh, I know that you actually have a strong relationship with the middle school band director. And I, you know, I think that that is an important aspect of any band program is to have that, uh, that symbiotic relationship with the feeder programs into the high school. Tell us a little bit about uh, what you've done to become successful with that, to keep that uh, high retention from the middle school so that by the time they get to you, they're staying with you, they're staying with the program and everything. You know, uh, every time, every question you ask, I'll say that this is one of the keys I had to our success because this is another key. You know, um, I guess I guess the success of this program has many, many facets. But um, this is a huge, a huge key, because um, if you don't have a good relationship with the guy who's feeding you, um, then, then you're not going to get 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 good, good quality players. You're not going to get get a, get a good a good cross section of instruments so that you have every part covered. Um, so my first two years here, I had a, I had a lady who was brand new band director at the middle school and, um, she just, just, just didn't do a very good job and, 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 and it was okay. It just wasn't her thing. But, but I, I began to find, to seek out somebody that I, that I thought could do a great job down there. And, and I found Glenn Burtner who was at, at a, at a neighboring high school. I said, Hey man, come over here do the middle school and let's, and let's, let's, let's start something really, really big here. Um, so he came over, great teacher. And once he was in it a couple of years, the numbers began to grow. And I remember him coming to me saying, man, I've got, I've got 90 kids starting in sixth grade wow. you know, in about four years. Dude, you're going to get, <laughs> and I was like, Oh man. So anyway, that was, the, that was the beginning of the real growth of the band program has been, has been Glenn started down there. And then Glenn, Glenn really, really worked hard. Um, teaching them, teaching them the right way. And so when they got to me, they were ready. Um, and so I just need to take, take them to the next level. And, 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 and again, getting them where they were. Some kids are better than others, of course, and that's the way it is in any school. Um, but you've got to have a good, good relationship. And Glenn and I would, 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 would discuss every year, um, how many tubas have you lost? How many, how many of this? How many, you know, and, and, and he would try, and he, would, he was very successful in starting – at least three or four horns, at least, you know, three or four tubas, you know, and, and not have 50 clarinets and, and, and 50 trumpets. Because, right. you know, when you, when they get to the high school, you, you know, you've got to have a good cross section. Um, so yeah, I mean, middle school program, if anybody, but you know, it's hard because a rural band director is probably doing the middle school and the high school. Right. Um, right yeah. Watching this. So, so that's, that's, you know, for us to have a different director down there and a full time director here, um, is, 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 is huge, but uh, is. yeah, if, but, uh, if, if you have your own band director down there. Gracious. Yeah. Have a great relationship, sit down with them and talk about it and, and, and make a plan and, and, and it helps everybody. Yeah. And, uh, having that strong relationship, uh, cause, uh, now uh, what types of stuff does he ever come up to the high school and help assist you with some of the stuff that you got going on there? Yes, 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 yes. The, the, uh, Middle school, and in fact, Glenn has retired. So now, now I have Kenny. Kenny's the the, the, the middle school band director, and Kenny helps with um, with March band every day. He comes from middle school and helps, and uh, so th that's that's worked real well. We actually got to a point um, in our in our county where we had three band directors. We had one at the middle school, we had one that went from middle school to high school, and helped me. And then was, and then I was here full time. Wow. Uh, because when the numbers got to 190, we, we, we really couldn't do it with two guys. Um, so the county, you know, because of the support of the county and, and, and because of the, I guess it was kind of a political thing. They didn't want to mess with the program because they would have a whole lot of, <laughs> a whole lot of sure. uproar in the community. So they, they, they really supported and provided another, another full-time director. We've since gone back to two directors because the numbers have gone back down. But um, that, was, that was great support that the county showed us. Sure. And I think, uh, you know, there, there's a few things that you mentioned there as far as the, uh, the support of the county and everything. And, uh, you know, when you are successful 
as a band director and the numbers build, you know, that's recognized by so many people. And when they see that stuff happening, uh, you know, that's usually the one of the last things that they're going to put on a chopping block. And uh, in a lot of a lot of times if it's very successful, like in your uh, situation where, you know, over the past 30 years, you've seen tremendous growth in the, the population, the percentage of the population that's coming through your band program, you know, they're, whether they are quote unquote in support of you or not, they're going to support you financially because that is a significant, you know, whether we like it or not, we are in a democratic society and, uh, you know, those uh, people on the school board are elected into those positions and they're looking at uh, your program and they're seeing 30% of their population, 40% of their population uh, being involved in bands. So, I mean, that's a significant thing. So, uh, yeah. you know, having that uh, support of the community really starts right in the band room. Right. And uh, yeah, it sure does. It sure does. doing a good job yeah. and trying to build that program. I mean, people, people have told me that I've really got a lot of, I've got the most political pull in this county and, and, you know, I don't want to use it because I never will, but, but uh, I know that they, that the, the, the supervisors and, and, and school board and, and they all support the band 100%. So they're going to try as best they can with the, with the limited funding that they have to support us um, as, as, as much as they can. And, and, and with support, you've got to be realistic, realistic. You, you can't, you can't expect a $10,000 budget from your county, you know, um, because it's, it's just not realistic. So you just gotta be realistic. Um, and, 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 um, they've always supported us and, and, and it's been really, 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 really great. Yeah. Now, uh, yeah. And that's, that's really key, you know, having uh, realistic expectations. Right. Part of that, uh, goes back to what you were originally saying before about knowing your community. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. Yep. So, uh, now, well, got, yeah. Community. Yeah. Community is great. Yep. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Now, uh, a lot of people are probably curious, uh, and you know, we're always looking for the uh, thing that will raise in, uh, the funds for our next trip, our next uniform mm -hmm. purchase, or whatever uh, it is. Uh, which, uh, and you guys, you didn't mention it this time, but I know that you guys actually went to London. Yes, uh, we did. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. So what are some of the things that you do as fundraisers? What are some of the, and I, we know that not every fundraiser is going to be successful in every situation, right. but for you in your situation, tell us what has really been successful. Um, you know, we, once you, once you do it enough, you, you pretty much have a set pattern every year. Um, and, and, and people need to know what to expect. We have done a, we have done a, a, a discount card, which is like a credit card, but it's got, a lot of local businesses on it that, that have that, that participate. For example, Subway, you buy a six inch sub, you get a six inch sub free. And so people will buy this card and it's got 20, I think 23 businesses on it of, of, of discounts. They buy it for $10 and uh, they can use it all year long for these discounts and uh, they get their money back. And, and that's, that's, that's been the biggest thing for us. We sell about a thousand of these cards. Wow. Uh, they sell for $10. I pay two fifty a card. So, you know, you can do the math. And, and, and so that's, that's a great fundraiser. And, and the beauty of that is every year it expires and every year people need right. a band card. And so my, my phone rings off the hook this time of year. Are the band cards out? Are the band cards out? <laughs> yes, they are. So, so, you know, that's, a, that's, that's a great one. Um, we do, we do band, we do citrus fruit, uh, oranges and grapefruits right around Thanksgiving. And that's really, really well received. People love getting it before Thanksgiving. And, and, and I found that to be a, be a great thing. Um, because we are rural, we don't have Krispy Kreme in our area. The, the nearest one is about 80 miles away. So we do Krispy Kreme donuts. And uh, um, that's, that's really popular, especially in, in, in school during the day. I always, I have your attention, please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Good. <laughs> Thank you. I always, um, as far as Krispy Kreme donuts, I, I always order extra because the kids always come down from not even in band, they come down with it with their eight dollars. Hey, can I get a box of donuts? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to talk rehearsal. Yep. All right, let me sell you one. Um, <laughs> so you know, donuts, fruit, band cards. We've done pizza kits that works real well. Uh, we've done cookie dough that works real well. Um, spirit cups. We just finished those. So when you when you're taking a trip, I try to do one every month, and so. Right. Um, give the kids, give the kids every opportunity they can to raise money for their trip. Yeah. 
Well, that's great. Robbie, I, I, I do appreciate you coming on and sharing your thoughts with us today for windconductor.com and Amano Music on the first ever online band director summit. Uh, we've got a couple more minutes. Uh, we've got a few more seconds before we got to get out of here. Uh, what is one thing that you would like to leave with any of the potential band director, all the band directors that are watching this site today? You know, I guess the biggest thing is you never know how you're, how you're touching kids. You never know what they're thinking. You never know what effect you're having on them. And, 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 uh, um, just, you just got to realize you have more influence over those kids than you really realize. Um, so, so your demeanor, the things you say, the snide remarks sometimes we make, you know, so sometimes we get kind of grumpy and, you know, you just got to be real careful. And, and, you know, as far as the relationships, the kids have to feel safe when they're with you. And, and in order for that to happen, you know, there's gotta be a mutual respect. I mean, as, as a, as a band director, I don't put up with any disrespect. I, I do not like disrespect because as I told them, you know, uh, you know, I tell kids quite often, you know, when have I disrespected you? And they can't answer that because they know I haven't. Right. So, and so, so it's, it's, it's kind of a really, really, really good relationship. Um, but, but my biggest thing is gracious me, you are touching kids and, and, and the more you can touch the better our society is and, 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 and the better things are. And, 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 and looking back on my career, um, that's the biggest thing. I don't care about the trophies. Uh, you know, you, you mentioned before we came on. Let's yeah. go with the trophies behind you. Well, yeah. you know, they're just, they're just, they're just, they're just uh, symbols of where we've been and what we've done. And, and right. you know, we, we we can play well and have success without getting a trophy. But um, trophies and people have asked me, well, what you can do with all those trophies when you retire? Well, they're gonna stay here. They're not right. not trophies. Yeah. <laughs> they're the kids' trophies. But um, yeah, just you know, please. I, can't can't emphasize enough to band directors and, and especially young guys coming out of college you know gosh don't miss days come in every day have mm -hmm. the passion for what you're doing and do the best you can man make music make music and enjoy the music get excited and have the let the kids see you get excited um it's not drudgery man it, you're, you're making music with with great kids and, and and it's probably the best job you can ever have that's great. And that's uh, such great words of wisdom. Uh, and again, I thank you so much for coming on and joining us today. This has been Aaron Noe with windconductor.com and Amano Music for the Online Band Directors Institute, speaking with Robbie Spires of Lancaster High School in Lancaster, Virginia. Thank you guys for joining us and stay tuned for more. Thank you, man.